Good morning. How are you doing? Welcome. On behalf of the Badminton Pan American Covenant Federation, we give you the warmest welcome to our Coach Corner program. My name is Adrián Gomez, and I will be your moderator in today's session. Today we have the pleasure, once again, of having one of the most emblematic badminton coaches from France. I'm talking about Mr. Vincent Leclerc, who will talk about a topic of great interest, formation path of young players in France, physical preparation. Before leaving you with Vincent, I'd like to read a short summary of our guest's career. As a player, He was top 13 of men doubles in the world ranking in 2002. As a coach, he has been the national coach of the French juniors team for more than 10 years. And as a coach educator, he has more than five years of experience teaching high-level coaches. Good afternoon, Vincent. Good evening for you. Welcome to our program. Thank you for sharing with our audience and welcoming us to your home in Strasbourg. I think that you can see it now. You can see my screen. So thank you once again for this uh, second invitation. After April's presentation, we mentioned that uh, there is a formation that includes both technical and tactical aspects in athletes. So today we're going to talk about everything related to the physical preparation. I'm going to review very briefly what we discussed in regards to the information that's available from the Badminton French Federation. It's um, destined to, or it's for coaches. So we started with these, uh, creating these resources with the uh, young device in 2010 and from 2014 to 2017, then we uh, released another um, document for technical orientations of high level, then another one in 2017 and 2018, which was about the uh, formation path for gen young athletes of high level. And then in 2019, the practical method for uh, youngsters from nine to 19 years old. Now, what's this device, who, who is this for? This is for three specific age groups. So this includes all high performance or high level athletes. So this is for the 50 Avenir clubs or future clubs in order to identify the potential talents in France who are from nine to 13 years old. The second group, age group is from 13 to 16 years old. They are uh, in the regional centers. We have nine regional centers in, in the French territory. Uh, besides the clubs. And then we have the last group, age group from 16 to 19 years old. We have two national centers in France. One is in Strasbourg. And we have around 200 athletes here. So these in, in total, we have 230 athletes from nine to 19 years old total. So this is for physical preparation, badminton physical preparation. So now I'm going to talk about what we've done in order to implemented this physical preparation structure. We have grouped different specialists for para badminton, for, for badminton, and we started defining what was the physical preparation needed for them. 
for athletes from 9 to 90 years old, we had to develop their physical uh, aspect of the physical as aspect of it or quality of these athletes. So this needed to be developed in all three uh, age groups. In and so from nine to 13 years old, from 13 to 16 years old, and then from 16 to 19 years old, depending on the group age and the appropriate tools for each age group. Taking into account their location as well, if it was a club or a center. So let's go back to this slide. In order to understand why it's important to organize the physical preparation, well, the idea is to be able to help athletes to adapt to a situation of competition, which is complex, um, singular, and unpredictable. We're going to discuss this later on. We, so athletes need to adapt to different competitive charges as well because, or competitive loads because there are a lot of different uh, competitions and athletes needed to work on this. Also, athletes need to be able to adapt to different types of training and training loads because they will differ throughout their life as an athlete and that needs to be structured. You need to have a training structure and the athletes need to try to adapt or need to adapt to these training loads. The second block is the availability. The first one was adaptation, and this is availability, which includes the motor skills, the physiologic, physiologic skills, and biomechanic skills. And this will allow us to ensure the great transformation skills of athletes in terms of performance. So we will be able to see a technical, tactical, and physical, and mental skills, and we are going to be able to develop them. And we need to develop this since a very young age. And then the third block is the prophylaxis, because athletes want to have a long career. So we need to have goals. We need to set goals in order to ensure in training continuity and physical preparation, which will allow athletes to have to have a training continuity. Also, the athletes need to be committed in order to train. So we need to analyze these really well. We mainly see these in people who were who managed to reach a high, the high level with a lot of success. They also need to have a lot of physical integrity throughout their career. And once we work on all of these challenges, we need to define the different uh, qualities that are a must in badminton, which is which includes strength and speed. But we wanted to work on the definition of these elements. That's why we have the uh, regulatory rules of uh, badminton for singles. We have to take in consideration in the permanent uncertainty that is created by the opponent. It's very. It's one of the very few disciplines that there is constant or there are constant uh, changes. And this has an impact on the physical quality that needs to be developed. So we need to think about the ID, or the average ID of a match, of a high level match. When we talk about high performance, a match usually lasts 42 minutes total in average, 19 minutes per set, 8 seconds per exchange, 
21 uh, seconds of recovery, that means that 25% of this is effective play. And these for the last 15 years, this varies depending on the score and we might see an additional evolution, but that's subjective. The BWF states that there will be an impact on the physical preparation in the midterm. So 50% of the exchange in a high level match lasts less than five seconds, which is very important for this discipline. And there is 80% of exchange that lasts less than 10 seconds. So we see that the, there is a good number of long exchanges, but there are other ones that last less than five seconds, but most of them last less than 10 seconds. There are nine uh, shots per exchange. And we see there's a difference in the speed of the shots, which is 1.4 shots per second in men doubles and men and, and and one point shots in the case of women singles, men singles, and women doubles in mixed and mixed doubles and, and doubles, it was the first case. Now let's see the motor skills. We see that there are 65 jumps for uh, singles and 38 jumps for doubles. We see that there's a big difference in terms of athletes. For example, if you play doubles or mixed doubles or singles, it's different. There's a great tendency in terms of preparation in comparison to other disciplines. And we're going to see the different particularities of these disciplines for men singles, women singles, women doubles, and men doubles and mixed doubles. We see that there are a lot of more short exchanges in mixed doubles. The same happens with effective exchanges and the time of the exchanges as well. The first group, um, in the first group, we can see that there are nine seconds per exchange, whereas in the second group, there are six seconds per exchange. So these, um, may have an influence on the discipline that the athlete can focus on. Also the speed of the game. So taking into account all of these different elements, the physical quality is important then. So we need to develop this before athletes uh, turn 19 years old. So we need to focus first on the different forces. Also, the how lively the game is. So what's most important is the ability to change uh, uh, directions as fast as possible. That's really important for the athlete. Also, the motor availability, which includes coordination and dissociation. Also, the flexibility and the mobility of the articulations. That's why we talk about the prophylaxis how active the person is. And of course, the aerobic aspect or aerobic capacity, the maximal power and the aerobic aspect as well, how fast a person can recover from one set or after a match. Other elements that are also important, these are some important elements which include um, injury prevention, uh, sleep. So all of these elements are included in the resources that we have, but this is very important to develop. Uh, we need everyone to understand this really well. Then we also had the need to work on the hierarchy 
of all this information in order to work on this in the long term. Evidently, we've worked on a schema a structure. We see first that the age period is from nine to 30 years old. And here we see um, the motor availability, the speed of the athletes, as well as the aerobic capacity, the mobility capacity, everything's different in comparison to the next two groups. And it's very important to take into account the flexibility and the, mob or the joint mobility. And we need to take that into account in physical preparation. This is another uh, graph that it's also very important to take into account. These are uh, sensible periods of time in the development of physical quality of people. So we can see the physical quality at different ages. Uh, in the upper part, you can see the information from women and in the lower part, you can see the information from men. So it's really important to focus on speed when they are young. It, why is speed more important than strength? Well, it, this information is different in men and women and it's important to work on strength at different in the age periods. We need to take into account that we are not structuring uh, these in a precognitive way. We have based this on all of these attributes uh, based on the information that we gathered. So once we uh, take into account all, once we took into account all of these elements, we worked on uh, practical um, files, for example, for physical quality. And we also have practical sheets according to the different topics. There are different priorities here we see and that coaches can focus on these um, age group. So there's a hierarchy in terms of quality development for a high priority and what's important to develop in the different age uh, groups. So there are also uh, medium priorities and low priorities. For example, between nine and 13 years old, we see that the most important thing is to focus on uh, liveliness of the athletes, they need to be really awake and also the motor availability and the aerobic aspect. In terms of the medium priorities, we have the joint mobility and the flexibility of the flexibility and the, the strengths as well. Between 13 and 16 years old, we also work on strengths, but also the joint mobility and the flexibility and the motor availability. But um, something that's not, it's not as important anymore is the aerobic aspect, the, the capacity, the liveliness and the individualization. And between 16 and 19 years old, we see that we... Uh, have uh, the strengths as a high priority as well as the aerobic aspect. And um, we see the motor availability as the, as a, as a, a, our least priority. Everything else goes in as a medium uh, priority. So we need to see everything that we needed to uh, develop in the different age groups and they have been included in a hierarchy. After that, we can see these files that they have been organized like this in a practical way. First, you have the definitions. And then, for example, what do we mean by uh, life, lifeliness, how lively students are, what players are? Then uh, what's the interest that the athlete has in badminton? Also, how we can observe and evaluate athletes to see the physical qualities of athletes in order to assess them, to evaluate them. 
in order to evaluate the level as well of an athlete in comparison to others, we also have the different uh, development methods that exist and the ones that are the most used or the most recent ones in terms of, for example, flexibility and joint mobility, uh, mobilization and so on and so forth. After that, we finally have some examples that uh, in regards to physical preparation in badminton, which can help us to integrate everything because there's also disassociated uh, physical preparation when you work with weights, for example, but we need to combine both things. The, in, the comprehensive physical preparation includes everything in order to have a good physical preparation. Well, that was the first part of my presentation. After the break, we're going to see quality and planning. All right, so I'm going to share my screen again. As I said before, we're going to talk about the physical qualities that we've seen. This is very important for badminton. So the definition for this uh, term of lifeliness or vivacity uh, is defined as the capacity to uh, move in different sequences uh, in a varied mo uh, sequence of mo movements with changes of direction, with multiple changes of direction. It's important to be able to work on these with different athletes. We need to work on uh, coordination of the different types of uh, speed. The quality of the foot is also or the, of, is very important as well. Also, explosive strength, elastic strength, how fast uh, an athlete can recover, and also the proprioception. Now, there is always a correlation between all of these factors. And we can treat these at a high level in order to process all of this information. So it's always important to work on this attribute in the field and to stimulate it as well. In order to understand the difference between what we call maximum speed and vivacity or liveliness, Here we can see some comparisons with other sports. For example, in rugby, we see the, the speed level is 66% versus 33% in terms of vivacity. In the case of football, we have 50-50%, so it's the same. But handball, it's 40-60%. In basket, 30-70%. In tennis, we see that... Uh, vivacity is more important because it's uh, 85 percent but in badminton is even vivacity is even more important because there's always a change of direction we need to process information uh, a lot faster so we need to be constantly uh, vivacious so this vitality vitality is really important we need to learn it then we need to improve it in order to have a better um, work foot uh, skill, we need also to improve our capacity in order to keep these movements in the long run. We also need to, to be able to change directions quickly and to ensure the quality of our shot in order to destabilize our opponent with every shot. If the foot is, you have stepped up uh, your foot appropriately, then this will be better. But if not, then it will be more difficult. Now, there are some ways in which we can work on vivacity. For example, we have the uh, slalom. 
the we have the rhythm scale the specific displacement and so on and so forth we can work on all of these exercises because they work on different elements and that's why we need to coordinate their use uh, during training in order to practice uh, the majority of elements possible which is really important for a sport we need to work on uh, footwork as well. We need to have fast feed and also we need to try to process information as fast as possible. We also need to, to work on vertical light plyometry, horizontal light plyometry as well with uh, very good um, information and um, trying to read the most information possible in the court. Also, we need to work on uh, specifically on badminton, for example, like changes of direction, rhythm, and speed. And it's really important to understand that all of these need to be worked on all the time as much as possible. So we need to work also on trying to work on all the information that we get in order to have to work on vivacity, vivacity as much as possible in badminton. So this is similar to what we saw in the technical tactical uh, part. We also need to understand uh, the principles of work of vivacity in order to understand the structure that we need to have. We need to have good physical abilities. We also need to work on the mental abilities. So a person needs to rest well, not only physically, but mentally as well, in order to achieve its highest performance. That's why I there are short and uh, long ideal uh, periods of time or the, the maximal effort and the cord effort, which is ideally from six to 15 seconds. We also have the long recovery, which is from four to eight times uh, when you work, sometimes you work. There's also a maximal engagement. You need to be uh, really committed. You, you need to focus and concentrate. Athletes need to be always prepared. And it's also really important that at the end of a warm up for a competition or for training, it's really important to do all of these at the beginning of the week as well. And you need to work on good physical environment. And, and the, in the short term, you also prepare in micro cycles. And the total uh, volume needs to be uh, light. If we have, if we take all of these principles in consideration, we uh, will have high capacity. This is just a small example that we found. I think that you might already know this. We can see an example of a training course. There are from six to eight a series of 12 to 15 seconds with a recovery time of 90 seconds minimum. This is for a maximum intensity in terms of techniques and postures. And there's a possibility to do these challenges in, in teams. So you can see here that there's an eight shape and then it, they go from side to side and then there's a light biometry and then uh, there's three, then after these three, after these three jumps, then there's a maximal, maximum speed with a sprint yeah, with a ladder and then oh, you do it again. This shouldn't take more than 10 seconds. If you see that the athlete cannot do it in 10 seconds, it's better to reduce the elements in order to improve 
vitality in order to ensure quality work. This is another example of what we can do in terms of um, working on specific, specific vivacity. For example, you can work on maximum intensity in terms of techniques and postures with nine series, uh, three times three, of six uh, uh, display, displacements or shadowing. Uh, the coach can indicate six uh, cones that need to be touched, and then there's a 90 second recovery minimum. So you can have a visual signal and you can do a sprint of, with four to five steps uh, in order to do a shadow. You also have an auditive uh, signal or a colored one you can have, and the same goes or you can, well, you can work with these exercises in order to work on strength in the aerobic aspect. But mainly you work on vitality based on the principles that we just discussed. So this is a light volume with a lot of recovery, but a lot of intensity as well. So let's check the strands really quickly because there's not much time and I would like to discuss other things. So strengths, uh, is important or it's an important priority or it's high priority for the age group between 13 to 19 years old. So you have the maximum uh, maximal force. You also have uh, speed strength or power. You also have explosive strength. You also have elastic strength, endurance strength. You also have strength of the hand or the finger power. And finally, we also have the strength that you need in order to recover uh, quickly to keep balance, to have an optimal transmission of the strengths and so on. So we need to focus on the different strengths uh, as a high priority between uh, in athletes between 13 to 19 years old. And we need to strengthen these with uh, weight lifting. We have a very specific exercises. There are five movements that are part of uh, young athletes formation for muscle building. So uh, athletes from 13 to 19 years old, they need to work on a, a good technique in order to have a good strength level, but also to have a good posture. And to avoid any injuries. Because this, this is a risk that increases the more weight we lift. So we need to, to work on posture in five uh, different exercises. So the first one was the squat. Then this is uh, just weight lifting. So these are the five different movements. Lunges. So I'm going to speak quickly about uh, strengths. Well, I want to finish this. Uh, that was everything about strengths, but I want to finish the presentation talking about the planning proposed for the period that includes athletes from 9 to 19 years old. So these are the first eight years from under 10 to under 13. You can see the legend with the information of the different characteristics. So this is according to different sections and seasons and the cycles include seven uh, weeks. So we have five cycles of seven weeks each where we identify everything uh, according to the age and the priorities, the high priorities, the medium priorities 
And then we can see the next cycle that includes under 14, 15, and 16. And then the last one that includes uh, athletes from under 17, 18, and 19. So let's see the planning for athletes under 12. Here we have the different uh, cycles that last seven weeks. What's interesting or what's important to do every week inclu is included here. We have one session per week in a badminton court. We can have um, a, sessions from a session from 15 to 20 minutes or two sessions of 10 minutes each per week. We work also on postures, whether it's squats or other, or lunges or any other type of movement. And there should always be good a good warm up before starting training. And it's really important as well to take into account these timings in order to uh, see how much practice we should uh, allocate in each cycle. Uh, and so each coach can um, program their training sessions uh, that should include physical preparation. This is an example of, uh, the, of the program for physical preparation uh, during a week in uh, players under 12. So there is a, there are there are sessions, there are four sessions in the at the gym and then there's work on at the court. So first we need to work on the warm-up. So five, 10 minutes top tops for um, warm for uh, warm up. Then we have the vivacity circuit that should last 20 minutes. And then there's also an individual set that was that should be a collective session that there should be an individual session and then a motor availability circuit that should last 15 um, minutes. And this is what I could propose in terms of planning. Evidently, we have developed all of this information in this uh, document. And if you are interested in more information, you can always visit uh, Form a Bad TV, which is a YouTube channel, the YouTube channel from the French Badminton Federation. Physical preparation is always part of these uh, of the content of this channel or uh, the athlete formation between nine to 19 years old. So I'm ready for any questions that there might be. Very good, thank you, Van San. So now we are going to move on to our Q&A section. Please, if you have any questions or comments, you can write them down in the chat box. I already have some questions. Is it advisable to use uh, resistant bands for young athletes? And if so, what would be the most appropriate age to use them? Well, the resistance bands can be used at any age, but I would say, but particularly before 13 years old, because you need to work on with them before uh, lifting weights, I would say. So in order to work on posture, for example, those are elements that could be used most definitely in order to help athletes during uh, warm up. So you can work on squats and any exercises that might work on specific strengths and always coaches need, coaches need to uh, help or accompany athletes all the time. We need to have a, a professional specialized in physical preparation because maybe using bars or uh, something else may be needed. So athletes who are under 13 uh, should use this uh, during warm up. It would be really interesting to do so in order to have physical preparation before working on strength. 
Okay, and in terms of weights, weightlifting, which would be the ideal age to start on weightlifting? Now, how can we make this different between men and women? Well, as you've seen before, you can start working on weights, but uh, you don't need to use a lot of weights. They don't need to be very heavy weights. You can work on squats or planks or other types of exercises to work on flexibility, for example, so weightlifting in a gym, as we said before, we only take into account these type of exercises uh, once they reach certain age. But men and women, well, the coach uh, is responsible for determining the, determining this because there uh, there's a big difference between the actual age and the relative age of athletes. For example, you can have two 12 year old athletes, but they might be different because they might have a different biological age or not. I mean, what do I mean? They both can lift weights, of course, but we have to prepare athletes in advance. We have to work on the technique, on the posture. And that's something that we focus a lot on in the case of young athletes. Sebastian from Argentina uh, says that to work on uh, hand strength and technique, do you think it would be advisable to fix or tune the diameter of the racket grip according to the uh, size of the hand I think that they're talking about the grip right okay um, for finger strength well there are rackets that are a little bit uh, heavier there is a whole group of ex exercises that can be done but in terms of a hand grip well there is a lot of work that we do with our fingers, but if your grip is not that strong, well, you can work on the fine movements that you need to, to uh, do in order to work with the shuttle. So yeah, you need some strength, but the grip needs to be light. However, when we are at the gym, well, for older, athletes they can use bars in order to work on the finger strength but it, it doesn't have to be necessarily with a racket we also have an interesting question that says how would you recommend it to um, foster physical operation among younger young athletes especially uh, when when it's 40 or 40 degrees or even more under the shadow. So when the temperature is quite high. I am not a specialist in this sense. Well, I live in Strasbourg and that doesn't happen much there as you might think, but well, we need to, to avoid uh, high temperatures. Maybe you can train very early in the morning. That's what uh, they do in countries where they uh, where there's or, or where it is quite hot. But we also need to avoid very long sessions. It's important to have shorter sessions, maybe very early in the morning or later in the in the afternoon when there, is, there are high temperatures, but those temperatures are quite high. So I think that we needed to avoid those high temperatures uh, all the time. And now if you can't, well, you should avoid having long sessions and obviously good hydration 
and there should always be a resting period and take that into account, uh, this temperature in order not to affect the health of young athletes. Perfect. One last question that is more related to you and to the process that you follow. Talking about the uh, route to Paris 2024, 20, how much will your training vary? Have you already made some changes in order to ensure have, to have a good representation in the next games? You mean Paris 2024, right? Yes. Well, the proposal, what I propose for uh, athletes under 19, well, I hope that everyone can uh, go to Paris 2024. There are already young athletes who are working uh, on this. They are uh, training to reach that goal. And well, everything they've said is a comprehensive plan for a team, especially for athletes who have reached these ages. They are the future players of our sport. So they are already working on their physical preparation. There's a, phys there's a physical preparation coach that um, personalizes the work, that customizes the work on, on each for each athlete. Uh, in in singles and evidently once we uh, see specific situations we can uh, work on that now the athletes who will attend if, who want to attend Paris 2024 are already uh, working on this physical preparation this uh, formation is uh, very uh, specific to each athlete well, unfortunately, we have run out of time, Vincent, but before we move, we finish, I don't know if you have a last message for our audience. Well, thank you for this second invitation. I would like to thank you for allowing me to uh, talk about young athletes formation. I hope I can see you very soon. It's always a pleasure to share what I do, especially with people from other countries and other continents. So please take advantage of all of this information, especially of the training that is available for you. Thank you, Vansan. To our badminton family, we invite you to our next webinar entitled Conscious Methods to Improve Your Performance in Competitions. This webinar will be the last one of this fourth season and it will be held next Tuesday, May 25th at 3 p.m. Lima time. We will have the pleasure of having Coach Rejure from the United States. We also encourage you to write to us and propose topics you are interested in through the chat box. Also, we'd like to invite you to check out our YouTube channel where you can see this and other conferences we have held in the past. Well, this is the end of today's program. And on behalf of Badminton Pan American Confederation, we thank you for your participation. Greetings, everyone. Take care and see you next webinar. Goodbye.